Hello everyone, welcome back to another Bible study and episode review in Shady Oak Ministries. I'm of course Shady Oak, and today we're going to be discussing episode 22 of season 6 of the TV show My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. The episode PPOV, or Pony Point of View, as the abbreviation would end up being extended. Now, the writers of My Little Pony have done myself, as well as the rest of us, a great favor in not necessarily taking any stretch of the imagination to illustrate their biblical themes. And this is not only greatly appreciated by myself and making my job easy and taking notes on these things, but they've also done us all a great service in making turning to the sources of this information not requiring too far a stretch of the imagination, as if they ever did. So, if you could join me in the book of Philippians, chapter 4 and verse 2, we're going to be discussing how first century conflict resolution, according to how Jesus said it should be handled, and how Paul demonstrated it being handled in literally the almost exact same situation and circumstances, not with the boat and the three-horned bunion or anything like that, but with the exact set of circumstances regarding three women that were just getting into a bout of conflict and needed to sort these things out, we're going to discuss how to practically resolve any conflicts that we find ourselves in and how they are just merely, well, for all intents and purposes, how they should be approached. So Philippians chapter 4 and verse 2, Paul speaking, I implore Yodia and I implore Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. And I urge you also, true companion, help these women who labored with me in the gospel with Clement also, and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Now, as we see, conflict resolution in the first century worked the same way that it does in, well, any century, and it's always going to follow the same pattern of caution. It's never going to be resolved by a third-party conversation, an individual who wasn't even there to witness it. Now, before I go into explaining the circumstances and the historical background surrounding this verse, I want to first point out how it was illustrated as well in today's episode so you guys can follow along with this. The illustration we saw in today's episode was when, after a very bizarre and uncertain set of circumstances involving a boat and cucumber sandwiches and bubbles and then a storm, all of these common factors appear in three different kinds of stories, all of which present the teller in the best possible light and the others involved as either in a neutral or unhelpful light or as the absolute only person who could ever have caused such a bizarre set of circumstances to occur in the first place. It was all their fault. I did my best, and they were just kind of there. Well, Rarity says Applejack was entirely the one at the fault for driving into the storm, going all Captain Nemo on us. Pinky says Rarity's vanity was all what put their lives in danger, and Applejack says Pinky and Rarity both played their parts in the accident. But we ended up finishing the episode without little more than a few irrelevant details and never actually got the whole story of what actually happened other than the fact that the boat's problem was that a three-horned sea puppy liked cucumbers. That's all we could really discern from this. But the reason this is a biblical theme is because it was resolved in the exact same way that Paul did with his friends at Philippi. Now, what happened with Yodia, with Syntyche, and Claudia getting involved. Well, we were never told. We don't know, because Paul never addressed the original issue, which speaks volumes about what really matters in conflict resolution. Instead of focusing on the accident, he focused on their relationship. Now, here's the key. What did Claudia, Yodia, and Syntyche all have in common? Well, for all intents and purposes, it was the same thing that Applejack, Pinkie Pie, and Rarity all had in common. They were all sisters in Christ, and they all just needed to understand and work out this matter on their own, one-on-one, -on -one, person to person, because Twilight was never there. She could provide some Sherlock Holmes-style investigation to figure out what caused the problem, but ultimately the problem damaged the relationship. And if you go on fixing the circumstances in the past instead of the current happenstances and the actual damaged product of the relationship in the present, you're not going to lead anywhere into the future. So understand, 
how do we work out these matters? How can we practically apply these things? Well, let's start with Jesus' recommendation on these matters. Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. Now, isn't that so like us in our fallen sinful state that just like Pinky, AJ, and Rarity, the last thing that we want to do is to just go and talk to someone when we think we have a problem with them. No, we can't do that because then the matter might be settled and I want to be angry about it some more. Mm, dang it, it sounds so bad when you speak it so honestly. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. But if he will not hear, take with you one or two more. And by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. Bring some witnesses, bring some support to confront this issue. And if he will not hear, and if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church, bring it into the public, then twilight can get involved. But if he refuses to even hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. Then the relationship should be cut off, because clearly they don't want resolution. They're just looking for an opportunity to be angry with you. And then Jesus goes on and says, Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you, that if two or, yeah, that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst of them. What's Jesus' point in all this? To be as brief and as straightforward as possible. Don't whine about your grief with someone who wasn't even there. Remember why you're all here. And let Jesus be the one who meets with this matter with all of you. If you focus on what's important, not the boat, not the cucumbers, or even the three-horde bunion, you're all friends. You're all loved by the same Lord. What else matters? What else is needed to resolve any kind of conflict? Thank you for your time and listening to this study. I hope it's been a blessing to you. It's a rather brief one today, but we can thank the writers for that. If you have any questions or would like to know more that we didn't get the chance to discuss in this study, leave them in the comments below. Sincerity will always be matched with clarity. If you'd like to encourage the ministry, you know where to go. But most importantly, you know someone who's seen today's episode but hasn't necessarily recognized its message? Please share this study with anyone you feel would be blessed by it. Thank you for your time and listening to the study. And once again, remember that Jesus loves you.